In this video, we'll be talking about myotonic dystrophy. As the name suggests, myotonic dystrophy means dystrophy of the muscle. And it's the most common type of muscular dystrophy found in adults. So it's a progressive myopathy. It includes myotonia. That means delayed uh, relaxation of the skeletal muscle after it is contracted. So there is a sustained contraction and delayed relaxation. It has multi-organ involvement. The prevalence is like 1 in 8,000 individual. And then the inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant. We'll talk about myotonic dystrophy in a bit more details. So stay tuned till the end and don't forget to subscribe. So myotonic dystrophy is a genetic disorder characterized by muscle weakness and myotonia. That means prolonged and sustained contraction of the muscle. So just to break it down and simplify, there would be thinning and atrophy of the muscle. Also, for example, a patient is trying to clench the fist and then try to relax. This kind of simple event would take much longer in the patients suffering from myotonic dystrophy. So the delayed relaxation of the muscle is one of the hallmark. Let's talk about the genetics because it's a genetic disorder. So there are mutation in DMPK gene or dystrophia myotonia protein kinase gene. And there is also mutation in CNBP gene, which, is, which codes for a particular uh, DNA binding protein. Now the mutations that are found in these disorder are nucleotide repeat expansion uh, mutations. For example, in DMPK gene, CTG is repeated several times. Whereas in CNBP gene, the, the repeat unit is CCTG. Anyway, this particular repeat lead to functional abrogation of these particular uh, mRNAs. So overall, it's a nucleotide repeat expansion disease. Let's talk about the clinical symptom. So there could be cognitive impairments, cataracts, arrhythmia of the heart, respiratory difficulties because the diaphragm could be affected, gastrointestinal problem is also associated, but the most prominent ones are muscle weakness and distal muscle weakness. So basically the legs and the hand muscles are the one which gets weakened over time. Okay, apart from that, the facial features are pretty uh, distinct because uh, there is something called myopathic faces. That means there would be weakening of the facial muscles or the muscles which are used for mastication of food. There could be also this frontal baldness, which is pretty characteristics of patient with my, uh, myoclinic, uh, myotonic dystrophy. Also, there could be drooping of eyelids, technically known as bilateral, bilateral toptosis. Also, there could be sternocleidomastoid weakness. So overall, there could be chances of more neck pain. Since the muscles around the eyes are also weakened, that's why there could be delayed opening of the eye. Now, if we look at the histology of these muscles, we can appreciate the lot of differences between the histology. So just to look at, look at the cross section of the muscle, you can see the muscle fibers are pretty much disorganized and disoriented. But if we look at the zoom view, we can see the nuclear positioning is altered. In normal cases, the, nu uh, the nucleus is always uh, uh, situated in the uh, one corner of the muscle cells. But here, the nucleus are present in the center in many of these fibers, not all, but many. There could be pycnotic nuclei or nuclear clumps. There could be ring fibers present in many of these muscle fiber cells. And also, uh, there could be irregularity in the fiber size, shape, that is pretty distinct. You can see and compare these two, all these shape and size of these muscle fibers are very different. Now let's talk about the molecular pathology once we understand the histology. So basically CNBP and DMPK, these two important genes give rise to uh, important protein products. DMPK give rise to a kinase, CNBP give rise to a particular um, a, a DNA binding protein. So due to this trinucleotide repeat ex expansion type of mutation, the mRNA that are produced actually forms hairpin-like structure. That can attract many RNA binding protein. And that is not really a good thing because it would lead to RNA toxicity that it can sequester many protein and not allow them to do their own job. 
So there could be loss and gain of function of many downstream protein which eventually lead to RNA toxicity. Even sometimes it can lead to protein aggregation. All of these can uh, have a consequence on the overall physiology of the muscles. Anyway, there are two types of myotonic dystrophy, DM1 and DM2. The gene mutated in DM1 is basically DMPK and the gene mutated in DM2 is CNBP. So the symptoms are a bit difficult. Individuals with DM1 may experience muscle weakness, myotonia and various systemic issues like heart problems, cataracts, etc. So the symptoms are overall similar of D, uh, between DM1 and DM2. But DM2 patients present with muscle weakness uh, and, and various other kind of, uh, I mean, the nature of the weakness is a bit different in these uh, DM2 patients. So onset is, uh, in case of DM1, is often appearing in adulthood and uh, the onset could be also variable. And the onset of DM2 is typically adulthood, but it's generally uh, considered as uh, kind of more uh, subtle than DM1. So DM1 is the most uh, uh, detrimental type among these two. The inheritance pattern is autosomal domi dominant. Remember, remember those uh, trinucleotide expansion repeat. So let's say a father has a mutated gene. Chances are 50% of the offspring would get that disease. So there is a 50% chance of inheritance, which is quite high. Diagnosis of myotonic dystrophy is done by clinical evaluation. So obviously looking at the family history, whether somebody has this kind of muscle weakness kind of history is important to understand. Physical examination is also important, like just asking the patient to clench the fist, open it, opening eye and closing eye. These kind of uh, basic things can be used as a diagnostic uh, tool. The first pass analysis then obviously since there is trinucleotide repeat expansion this repeat expansion can be uh, basically PCR amplified and looked for the length of repeat e expansion and then there is electromyography, electromyography to monitor the muscle weakness and the degree of muscle weakness in some severe cases doctor might also prescribe a muscle biopsy followed by uh, uh, histological analysis but that's rare so the treatment options involve treatment uh, uh, treating the symptoms basically physiotherapy would help to improvise the muscle weakness there could be assistive devices like uh, these patient would also use wheelchair uh, some sort of adaptive equipment which would help them to move day by day uh, medications involve sodium channel blockers which would reduce the uh, sustained contraction of the muscle then mus uh, uh, there, there could be multidisciplinary approach to treat all the other kind of symptoms. So one of the major cause why uh, this patient doesn't survive too long is the cardiologic complications. So cardiac uh, monitoring, then ophthalmologic uh, treatments like uh, treatment for cataract and other things are important. And then finally, since these patients have uh, dysregulated endocrine profile one can also monitor that and try to fix those things and treat those symptoms so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in next video you can watch our um, other uh, notes and flashcards in instagram page also we have a website links are provided in the description please check it out